Hello all sentient beings and welcome to Transmissions Alt Mode where we talk all news, comics, and media related to the... On this episode we review IDW's Beast Wars number 11 in comics, Beast Wars Optimus Primal and Megatron deliver their annual holiday greetings, and even more guests are announced for TFCon Los Angeles. Today is Friday, January 7th, 2022, and this is episode 267 of Transmissions Alt Mode. Welcome to Transmissions Alt Mode, the podcast that loves a good stiff cognac after a long, hard day. I'm your host, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team, Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Hey, how's it going? Scott, the illustrious Dr. Pants. Hello, everyone. And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. Yes, cognac, (laughs) as I make air quotes. Let's talk Transformers. (laughs) What, was I I supposed to say cognac? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I don't know where you're getting that from. (laughs) (laughs) It's not a double entendre at all. <laughs> As always, we start off the show by thanking our Donatrions, those lovely people who support us on Patreon and PayPal. Thank you so much for continuing to help us out. We really appreciate it. And we welcome back one of our longtime Donatrions. They have rejoined the Patreon. So, Skirt, welcome back, Skirt. See you on the Discord. We see you very often contributing on the Discord. So, thanks for coming back. Hope we'll see you uh, listening to the live show once in a while. It's good to have you back. And uh, normally we would uh, promote that uh, we get the uncut uh, early bonus episodes of our live play RPG podcast, Empire of Rust, the Transformers only, first and only Transformers live play RPG podcast. Those are uh, you know some bonus episodes we put up on our Patreon feed for the Donatrons to get early access before the regular episode comes out, but unfortunately we had some technical difficulties and there is no uh, bonus episode coming up for this week. So uh, we'll just have to wait until the regular episode, episode 67, Hefty Hefty Sweet Sack. That's the name <laughs> of the, the next episode. Does, um, does, does Mike name these himself? or <laughs> He does. He, no, th- these are all Mike. These are all Mike. <laughs> okay, he is... I want to call him a genius, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not sure. Yes, sweet sack. <laughs> As I make air quotes. <laughs> you, you know, this is an audio podcast. Well, that's why that's he's why saying I, that there's air quotes. That's why I had to say it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There is a our, one of the main characters on Empire of Rust is Sweet Spot, so I think it's there's a there's a reference to that in in here. So, um, yes, but, oh, uh, <laughs> Sweet Spot. <laughs> More air quotes. <laughs> See, I don't even have to do it anymore. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so unfortunately, we we don't have a bonus episode coming this week, but the regular episode will be out the following week. So look for that uh, Monday, January 17th. Uh, and, uh, you know, enjoy uh, this. We, we've had a recent uh, very dramatic event happen on Empire of Rust. If you haven't listened to episode 66, you should go listen and find out what's happening with the characters. And this will continue that storyline. So I, I don't want to say any more because i don't want to spoil anything but just go listen you'll enjoy it okay let's uh, jump right into transmissions alt mode starting off with comics news okay so in comics news first up we've got a cover uh, the cover a for beast wars issue number 14 uh and this is this cover is done by friend of the show and listener Winston Chan. So this is, uh, and on, I think this was on Twitter. Winston showed off, uh, his process for creating this cover. This, the cover features, uh, I believe this is, is this polar claw yeah. grappling with Optimus primal. And, uh, he, uh, Winston took the, uh, the character design that Josh Burcham did for, uh, the beast Wars comic, and then used that as a reference for 
doing uh, his cover. It's a great cover. Mm-hmm. I like the Vok face in the back there, sneaking in. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's cool. And it's cool to see that, that Winston and Josh are, are kind of collaborating, uh, you know, as the... Um, as Josh did the interiors and then Winston, you know, asked for, um, Josh's reference to, um, create the cover. So that's cool. Okay. Uh, next, uh, we've got the solicitations for IDW Transformers comics coming in March of 2022. So, uh, there are some slight spoilers in the descriptions, but, uh, Nothing really surprising coming in March. Uh, we've got Transformers number 41. It's continuing the regular series. Beast Wars number 14, we just mentioned. And Transformers Wars End number 2. So that's the, the mini series that uh, was announced uh, last month. And then another uh, uh, trade paperback, we've got Transformers Best of Megatron. So this is a, a little trade paperback collecting a bunch of uh, random comics. So we've got... Marvel US number 70, that's, uh, that's the issue where Megatron and Ratchet were fused together uh, back in the 80s. We've got uh, Transformers 22, the, uh, this is the 2009 Transformers series from IDW, and this is Chaos Theory Part 1, so that was focused on Megatron's kind of beginnings as a, uh, as a kind of revolutionary. And we've got Megatron Origin number 1, which also ties into that same uh, you know, past of Megatron. We've got More Than Meets the Eye, number 32, Slaughterhouse, and that actually delves into Megatron in his post-Autobot, you know, post-Autobot phase, where he had, or post-Decepticon phase, I should say, where he had become an Autobot and then was grappling with what it means to actually be an Autobot when you're you know, the <laughs> founder of the Decepticons. And then we've got Autocracy, number seven, choices uh and i believe that also deals with uh um you know uh mega I, I forget exactly what part of megatron's backstory that deals with but autocracy was that mini series that that was the early days of the war and uh this was uh orion when orion pax was still uh had not gotten the matrix yet and was uh even forced to work with megatron for a little bit there I think it was the February uh, solicits. We had an Optimus Prime version of this. Oh, did we? Okay. I mean, the, but the, this this is it's it's a little bit weird. It's always weird to take when you collect comics like this, and then you like don't collect the entire um, stories for these because these, these are all you're yeah. dropping into like little pieces of these stories here. Yeah, I mean, unless there's going to be some kind of text explainer, but it, it's weird getting Chaos Theory Part One without Part Two. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, of course, I, you know, I've, I've read all of these comics, so it's, this is not, there's not really much incentive for me to pick this up. But I guess if people want some key Megatron stories, uh, this might be something good. So uh, that's all our comics news, and let's move on to our comic review. All right, uh, we are looking at Beast Wars number 11 this week because it is a Dr. Pants week, so we try to do Beast Wars. Yay. Um, this is written by Eric Burnham, art by Josh Burcham, letters by J. Kim Wood, assistant editor Riley Farmer, editor Jasmine Joyner, supervising editor David Marriott. Uh, cover A this um, week is a scold standing strong against uh, some raining crystals coming down. This is by... Sidvin Blue. Cover B is uh, the Maximals uh, against uh, a, a tree and uh, a setting sun on the savannah. And this is by John Yurkaba. And the retailer incentive has a rat trap sitting on Megatron's throne, uh, kind of uh, laughing at the rubber ducky. And this is by Brenda Chi. So, uh, Dr. Pants, let's start with you. Uh, which one of the three is your favorite this week? <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, definitely cover A. I have grown to love Scold throughout this whole series, so anytime we get amazing artwork of her, I am all for. Plus, this references a really big moment in this book, uh, a really powerful moment that you know we'll talk about in the review. And uh, yeah, I love that moment. I love this artwork. I love mm -hmm. seeing the crystals kind of bounce off of her armor and everything, and the wide-eyed look, not necessarily being angry, but like just shocked. Because of what's happening. I think the artwork's great, and I love this cover. Yeah. All right. Um, Daryl, how about you? Uh, I uh, I really liked and bought cover B. 
uh, that uh, that cover really uh, really kind of spoke to me, and uh, I have nothing against the other covers. I thought they were all really great. Cover A is really nice as well, um, but uh, something about the uh, the color palette chosen for B, um, and, uh, and the way you, they kind of all kind of merged into the uh, into the 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 kind of singular image into the front or into the cover was uh, was really kind of cool for me. So that's what cover that I went with. Awesome. Uh, Charles? Uh, I am also going to pick cover A. I, I think that uh, that image is, is really nice. I, I like, uh, as Dr. Pan said, I, I like Scold. Uh, she's becoming a, you know, a fan favorite character in this new series. And yeah, this, this was a pivotal moment in this, uh, in this issue. So it's nice to have it rendered here. I, I do want to say that all three of these covers were interesting, and I, I it, it seems like these are all. I, I mean, Sid Ven Blue, we've had we've had lots of uh, uh, covers from them already, but the other two artists, I th- I don't think we've seen them on Transformers comics before yet. So yeah, it's cool to see new artists getting an opportunity to do covers here. Yeah, I, I looked up uh, Brenda Cheeks. That was a, a new name for me, and. It looks like she's also doing a cover for number 14. Okay. So it is nice seeing uh, new names come up uh, with with these covers. Um, but I think this week my selection would probably be that, that RI cover. Just it, I don't know what it, what it is about it. It's just the colors, the fun, um, kind of doing the throne as a, a Decepticon logo reference. But, you know, obviously it's not. But I don't know. It was just it was a fun cover. Um, but I think all three of them were, were pretty good this week. So, all right, uh, let's get into the, the story. This is Maximal Strike Back Part 2. Uh, it begins in Megatron's chambers where he's still trying to, to solve the mystery of the Golden Disc. And, um, now that it relates to him, he, he wants to know, um, how he can use it to change his future. And, uh, as he's trying to work this out, the dark side alarms, go off and he checks to see if it's just another false alarm that the alarm's going off and the computer alerts him that they're actually under attack and he's eager to go out and um, have a, a, some something he can use to vent his frustrations against. When he uh, goes, transforms into beast mode and uh, charges out of the dark side, he's promptly uh, blasted by Dinobot and Megatron is at first, kind of shocked that Dinobot is uh, still alive after what happened to him the last time they, they met. Uh, but he, he can, he decides that he's going to make sure that uh, he finishes the job and kills Dinobot this time. During all of this, um, this fighting, Nix and Rat Trap are sneaking onto the ship, but Black Arachnia spots them and she's going to, she tries to stop them, but Cheetor Decides he has a score to settle, and he um, he occupies Black Arachnia, letting Rat Trap and Nyx sneak into the ship. They come to a fork in the road, and um, thanks to um, thanks to Dinobot, they have a map of the ship. Rat Trap goes over to um, try to get the golden disc, while Nyx goes to try to disable the transwarp drive. And uh, when she goes in there, uh, Tarantulas spots her and he surprises her. However, uh, this time, as opposed to the time that she was captured by him and tortured, her weapons are, are fully available to her. And she, um, she's not as easy of a pushover as she was when she was completely unarmed last time. Rat trap. However, he goes into Megatron's quarters and he's sits in the throne, tries to figure out how he can find the disc. And he, uh, bumps into a button and the disc pops out of a slot. So, uh, realizing that it's gonna, it was very easy, he decides he's going to try to get some more information from the computer. Outside the ship, uh, the battle is wa- is raging. Uh, Primal uh, blasts Waspinator, and then Skull tries to um, return fire. However, Razor Beast, uh, who has been fighting Pterosaur, uh, temporarily disables Pterosaur to try to get between Primal and Skull, trying to tell Skull um, to, to look and see that all the Maximals are either uh, fighting to disable or fighting defensively. They are not trying to kill. Um, and as, as Skold sees this, Pterosaur recovers 
grabs Razor Beast and flies up to the the floating island where the um the Energon crystals are and uh lets Razor Beast fall uh onto the island with a huge explosion, uh presumably killing Razor Beast. Scold sees this and is shocked and um when Pterosaur lands, she um she like grabs him by the chest and rips out his uh spark. So um in, in the Megatron Dinobot fight, uh, Dinobot is, uh, is, or Megatron is realizing that a Dinobot is favoring uh, his right size, his right side, and uh, uses his his dinosaur head to bite through Dinobot's superstructure and um, just finishes off Dinobot, or he, he's about to finish off Dinobot with his sword when Optimus Primal blasts him with his shoulder blasters. And, um, um, and after all this, uh, this chaos in this battle, um, Scold, ha- after she has killed Pterosaur, she goes and she finds Wa- Waspinator, lets her know that, or lets Waspinator know that Pterosaur has been, um, taken out and Waspinator is vowing vengeance as this, this issue ends and, um, we'll see the conclusion in the next issue. So, uh, this was, I think, uh, a pretty fun issue. It, it was, it had action, it had kind of strategy which uh i'm not used to seeing so much kind of strategy to the battle in in a lot of these comics um i thought the art was really cool especially um like some of the dynamic art uh with the battle scenes i think was great um i really love scold in this and uh we we see pterosaur spark outside kind of on the ground but pterosaur's body has gone gray so I'm, i'm not sure what's going to happen if I had to suspect something, I would suspect that the Vok are going to kind of be involved and take the spark and do something else with it. But that's just pure speculation. Um, but this was, this was really fun. I'm really enjoying this arc and I am um, just, I'm, I just can't wait to see how it ends. Uh, Dr. Pants, what were your, what were your thoughts on this? <clears throat> As per usual, I was super thrilled to read this. Uh, you guys know, I always gush about beast wars. Uh, my only thing with this issue is, is it is definitely the middle of like a three part series because it's continuing off of the last issue. We know it's going to conclude in the next one. So this is that middle part and it doesn't really feel like it has a beginning and an end to it. It's just more of that story, but the story is great and I love it. Um, I don't know what there is to say, really. Uh, the action scenes do look really, really good. Josh's art is on point and fantastic. I love all the fight scenes. I love that a lot of stuff that was set up in the first couple of issues like comes back with like Cheetor going up against Black Arachnia, uh, Nyx blowing up Tarantula's, de- Tarantula's device that they had used to imprison her before, Dinobot going up against Megatron again. And uh, with Dinobot, I, I don't think they're going to kill him off soon because we've talked about before, but Dinobot, of course, you know, perished in the original series much later, but I get the feeling he might be taking out a fighting sometime soon and might act more as a mentor um, mm-hmm. because it seems like he's being damaged too severely to keep going, but we'll, I could see that. So we'll have to wait and see. I, w- I would be happy to see him as kind of like a trainer who helps train like the younger Maximals and younger characters to fight better and just how to fight. Cause we see here like yeah. Optimus Primal holds his own really well. Uh, mm-hmm. and so does Rhinox. He's doing fine, but Cheetor we know has had some issues in the past and Rat Trap probably doesn't fight too well. We don't know Nyx how well she's going to do, but the Scold. I, mean, I could also see him being a mentor to Scold if she comes over. Yeah. And that was going to be my other thing is we are now setting up that Scold thing where they're really, really setting up her leaving the Predacons in some way because of the way Pterosaur acts and how Razor Beast points out how the Maximals fight. I can't say for certain if Razor Beast is gone for good or not. Um, I mean, we see him land on the island and there's the pachoom sound and we presume that he's been uh, exposed to too much of the Energon and he dies, but maybe he could come back. I don't know. Uh, his character has probably served his purpose. So I could also see mm-hmm. him being dead. He, he he got through to Scald and, oh man, it felt so good to watch Scald rip into Pterosaur's chest and just pull his spark out because screw that guy. I hate him. I hope he's gone for good. I hope he doesn't come back in any way because I hate that guy. He's just yeah. It, if anything, the the death here was better than in the show. Oh yeah, because in the show he just gets knocked into the lava and it's not deserved at all. This was oh, this was good. 
This was good. He's like Starscream, but worse. No one loves Pterosaur, right? Right. <laughs> I And uh, something that I want to bring up is Skull doesn't stutter after doing it. They had mentioned she stuttered around the Predacons and everything, but when she says, I always hated you and talking with Waspinator, she's not stuttering anymore. Mm-hmm. So she kind of uh, got past that. And oh, God, I love Waspinator, too. He hasn't had too much, like big time in the comic but just the couple of things he's done i love him and i just i want more waspinator the book's great i want to see the conclusion i want to see more this is my favorite time of the month guys anytime you bring me under review beast wars i will sit here and gush about it so as always thanks i enjoyed the book awesome all right uh daryl mr uh, mr number one beast war fan of the podcast mm-hmm. what do you think um <clears throat> i I mean, I liked the action. It was good that there was uh, some decent action in this. Uh, I did appreciate a lot of the fights. Um, <clears throat> I feel like an ongoing thing here is going to be Dinobot and Megatron going at it. Um, and, uh, I mean, I really don't have a lot of connection to any of these characters. So uh, the killing of uh, Pterosaur was, it, it didn't really do anything for me. Um, but it was nice to see a character die, maybe. Um <laughs> Maybe two if uh, Razor Beast is dead as well, um, but uh, but yeah, I mean it's uh, it was a fun issue for me uh, just uh, just kind of to see the uh, the battle. Um, I'm a little bit uh, more um, not not as happy with the art on this. Josh is his he's got a very particular style, and um, and there's. There's a, a a lot that can be done with his his character work. It, it's it's very good, um, but there's nothing going on in the backgrounds of his stuff. It's very bland, and there's not a lot really happening. Um, so yeah, his character stuff is is very stylistic and very cool to look at. But anything beyond the foreground is just nothing. There's nothing there. And there's a lot of line movement and, you know, a lot of speed lines and, and a lot of that kind of stuff. But um, really nothing else is going on back there. And uh, and really the only kind of panel that, that really was about was that there was a full page shot where uh, Nix entered into the, the ship and says, whoa. Uh, and that's really is the whole idea is to, you know, that there's a lot going on in the background of this, this shot is that that's why that's there. Um, yeah. So... Generally, the art for me, and this has been, it's my MO for, for reading comic books, is if the art is not up to my standard, then I'm really not going to be impressed with the book. Um, you know, the 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 panel with uh, Pterosaur's spark getting torn out, that could be a gruesome, gruesome panel. Um, but it just, it doesn't, it doesn't look gruesome. It it just, you know, the fight between Dinobot and, 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 and Megatron could be just visceral and it, it just, it, it doesn't look it, um, you know, it, there's, there's certain things here that, that could be so much more and, and they're not. And that's, and that's me wanting more out of the, out of the art. Uh, the story is fine. I'm, I'm, you know, as a, somebody who really doesn't, care about beast wars it's it's fine but i'm looking f- at this book from an art perspective at this point and i'm i'm not happy with it i'm not satisfied yeah, I, I can see a lot of those points uh that scene you mentioned with Nix probably was one of the best uh like uh images in the book just in terms of scale and everything you, you see yeah but it was Nick's that was really the whole small. point of that page was to was to right. really make it like holy crap, this is a big ship and there's a lot of space to cover, right? And there's a lot going on, right? But that was the entire yeah, but then you page. you look at the other pages with the, the inside of the ship, it's more like what you said with very lacking in the background. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing there. I can definitely see that. And then also one thing I forgot to point out with Optimus Primal, like when he blasts Megatron, in the, the show and in the toy, he has the short stubby shoulder cannons. They're, they're really long uh, and pointy here. And I'm just trying to think, how, like, with the distance that you see the, between the two, how do you aim those and hit Megatron? Hmm. Um, but, yeah, I can 
I mean, it's definitely a stylized. Um, mm-hmm. And I get, with, and I get art. stylized changing of the characters, making them look different. You know, even G one characters, you get Optimus Prime being drawn with like these super huge long antennas on his head, and you know, you got the like the big long chest or the tiny windows in the front, and you know, the super skinny, you know, middle. You can draw Optimus Prime to be really really stylized and and that's fine all these characters are drawn really stylistically and that's josh's mo and that's that's fine it's but you gotta do something with the backgrounds here just to to make it look like there's actually a world that they're fighting in right Mm -hmm. there's nothing happening here right all right well um charles let's finish up with you what were your thoughts yeah, this is a really, uh, a really high point, a good issue. Uh, I, I like to see the Maximals being dynamic here and being proactive. And, and you know, like I, I, I'm, I'm on board with Optimus Primal saying he wants to take the fight to the Predacon. So I like, um, you know, normally it's it's always the the good guys reacting to what the bad guys do. So putting the bad guys on the back foot here, uh, I think was cool. I like, uh, yeah, this was. I mean, this was a really, I think, well paced. And well structured issue, lots of different things going on. You know, we we get key moments in the battle from lots of different sides, and yeah, some shocking um, deaths here. I mean, we don't know what uh, Razor Beast might still be alive. We'll, we'll hold out hope for him, but I think Pterosaur is. Yeah, he's. I mean, she she dropped a spark on the ground. <laughs> it's that was. I mean, it's it's showing how how. You know how much of a badass Scold is, and you know they Pterosaur even talked about using her her insecurities against her, and yeah, when she overcomes that, uh, she's very dangerous. So that's a, it's a, yeah, it was a it was a really uh, I think a really well done issue, and um, yeah, it makes me look forward to more uh, for Beast Wars. Awesome. Well, uh, that is it for the comic review this week. All right, we'll move on to Transformers Media News. All right, in Media News this week, we've got uh, a couple things, a lot of stuff to close out 2021 with because we were, uh, you know, kind of off last week, kind of on, kind of off. Um, But uh, we've got uh, the most beautiful night of 2021, Billy Billy Party, was a live concert featuring Transformers. Uh, This is from a... uh, Chinese video platform called Billy Billy. Never heard of it before, but uh, apparently they had some kind of live uh, concert, and uh, there you go. It, it had some uh, had some Transformers featured. Uh, these were, uh, I think, people in costumes. Yeah, it says yeah. cosplay. Yeah, costume people uh, out there uh, dancing around. Uh, you know, so very cool. Um, it's uh, you know maybe if I knew about this beforehand, I might have tuned in. Because uh, we were looking for some some different things to watch on New Year's Eve, and uh, you know, I may have I may have tuned into this just to see the spectacle. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, also we've got a uh, a Transformers VRC, which is an officially licensed virtual run. Um, this is uh, it's a, a, I guess it's merchandise, new merchandise. So we've got some. Uh, it, it's like a, a one of those virtual five Ks. Only this is like. Throughout the entire year, you have to oh, I see 300 miles is. without the year. I see. Okay, cool. That's very neat. Um, is this this is happening more and more often now for for marathons, isn't it? There because they don't want all the people you know crowded together. They want them to be able to do their marathons virtually. So they've got merchandise out for this virtual run. You can get um, t-shirts and uh, uh, you know your your number card and stuff like that. So that's kind of neat. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in, in if you're a marathoner, then uh, you know maybe look into this and, and be a, become a part of it. And it's not just marathons; you can just do a walk if you want. You just have to do the 300 miles over the course of the year. 300 miles in a I'm year, good. though. A in a year. year, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. That's crazy. I mean, you, they, they have <laughs> different awards for like different. Can I drive it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's that's less than a mile a day. You can you can I I I walk over three miles a day. Come on, Daryl, you what, can do it. Come on, what is what is what is a mile in in real measurement? <laughs> Two thirds of or no, uh, uh, one and one and a half kilometers. One and one and two thirds kilometers. That's all. That's an awful lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it, um, 
there's a self-service package that's eighty five dollars or an accountability package that's one hundred and thirty. Can um, I can I pay I'm, like five hundred dollars and have somebody run it for me? <laughs> if you buy the $85 package, you receive all of your pins and medals at once. Oh, shit. I don't even have to do it. Reg- I mean, Daryl, if you want to pay someone $500 to run it for you, I will gladly run it for you for $500. You got to do it all in one weekend, though. That's the catch. <laughs> what, 300 miles? Sure. No. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I can't do that. Not in one oh. weekend. You give me a month, I'll do it. Well, we'll, we'll have to come I'd up with something. I'd be interested if any of our listeners are, are doing this. Let us know. Uh, moving on, we have some <laughs> annual traditions that, uh, that came out over the, the holiday break. And, uh, the first one is from, uh, Optimus Primal voice actor, Gary Chalk. The, we thank you for watching Beast Wars holiday message. And we've got a link in the show notes if you didn't see it. So you can take a look at that. And the second is the annual, uh, Beast Wars Megatron message from actor, voice actor, David K. And, uh, it was his 2021 Christmas greeting. So... You can take a look at that. I know that we uh, did get some advance notice of that, so we were able to uh, tweet that out and put it on our social media platforms uh, uh, prior to it uh, airing. So, But if you didn't get a chance to see it, uh, we do have a link in the show notes for that as well. Um, in movie news, uh, we've got official Transformers Sharktacons good at more than just chomping stop motion video. Uh, this is another one of those videos uh, that was produced, uh, and it uh, goes along with... Uh, uh, the, uh, the other ones, and you can take a look at that. I did watch this one and it's actually pretty good. It's a, it's a fun little, fun little shark to con video, um, out of auditioning for more, more than just chomping in the, uh, in the movie. So that's pretty good. And then there's another one that, uh, that did come out and it's the, it sucks getting old. Am I right? Stop motion video. And I think this was the cup one. Let me just, yeah, yeah, it's the yeah. cup one. So it does feature Studio Series Cup and Studio Series Blur. Um, and uh, so those are both uh, linked in the show notes as well. And uh, I think at some point uh, when we get to the end of these, we're going to have to make up a uh, a playlist or something like that to get, you know, so we can watch them all in a row. Yeah, the interesting thing is that the, these videos were, they were supposed to go up, they were supposed to be aired with the Transformers 86 movie uh, re-release when it was in theaters, but they got cut. So... It's nice to finally get to see them, even though no one got a chance to see them when the 86 movie came out. I mean, how do you, why do you cut them? (laughs) I I have no idea. I don't know why. I mean, you already know the length of the movie. Yeah. I I don't know. I don't know. You're dealing with known quantities at this point. Um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, the last thing we Maybe they weren't ready in time or something. I don't know. That, that's kind of what I was getting at. You know, they were, they may not have been done. The last thing that we have, though, for media news is uh, we have a little statement from uh, Hasbro about the future of Transformers live action and animated movies. And uh, no surprise here, I haven't actually read this. So has anyone read this? Essentially, it's just they're looking forward to uh, Rise of the Beast in partnership with Paramount. And on the animated side, they are work, also working with Paramount on a whole new animated storytelling universe that will launch in the coming years. So looks like they're sticking with Paramount. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would imagine the animated stuff um, would be on Nickelodeon. I think that's owned by Paramount. Mm-hmm. Um, so either there or Paramount Plus, which does have a lot of animated stuff too. So I don't know. It It's just there. there's, you know, the live action movies coming, you know, a year and a half from now, it sounds like the animated stuff would be after the movie. So mm-hmm. nothing now, but trying to just keep people excited. I mean, that delay really, really pushed it back a long way. So that kind of mm-hmm. sucks. Oh, well, but- yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to be surprised if we start seeing the toys come out later this year, which is going to ruin like people like me that want to kind of, stay as spoiler free as possible. You know, the toys are going to give everything away. Mm -hmm. I remember working at Toys R Us when the, I think it was the second GI Joe movie came out and well, it was supposed to come out. All the toys hit the shelf and people were buying them and then they delayed it because they wanted to make it 3d because 3d was so cool and in. And so they pulled all the toys off the shelf and we had to go and get them all off the shelf in one day. And, uh, 
And people were really upset that, you know, I can't go to the store and buy my G.I. Joe toys anymore. And I'm like, well, it's, you know, it's not our fault. We had to pull them. But uh, I wonder if they, you know, this is far enough advanced that we may actually be able to, they may actually be able to hold them and, and stop, you know, yeah, anything. Hopefully. But the problem is, is you're going to get I mean, people that are going to take pictures of the stuff that's already ready to go. Right. I mean, thankfully, we do have a lot going with Legacy and with the, the Bumblebee Studio Series Legacy um, Cyberverse line, you know, however many more descriptors you want to put in the, the Bumblebee line. <laughs> yeah. And well, uh, supposedly there's that BotBot show coming out at some point. I mean, we haven't heard anything about it in like a year, but there was that announced. That's true. Right on. Well, that'll do it for media news this week. All right. And we'll finish up the show with convention news. All right, uh, we have a lot of announcements for TFCon Los Angeles. Um, TFCon Los Angeles will be March 11th through 13th at the Los Angeles uh, Marriott Burbank Airport Hotel and Convention Center. So um, we have announcements that uh, Jack Lawrence is going to be there. He is you know artist on many things. Currently, he is on Wreckers Tread and Cir- Circuits, which has been a very, very enjoyable comic. Uh, so he will be there all weekend, and um, we also have Livia Ramondelli will be there, and uh, he doesn't have any current Transformer stuff, but he, I'm sure, will be talking about or you know promoting his Killlock stuff. But um, he's done tons of Transformer stuff in the past. Dan Gilvezan, voice of G1 Bumblebee, will be there. He's a, always a great convention guest, and then Ian James Corlett, who was uh, the voice of Cheetor and Beast Wars, will be there. So. Um, lots of good media guests, uh, being in Los Angeles, I imagine there's going to be a lot more announced. Um, this is just like the last TFCon Los Angeles. It's going to be tons and tons of media guests. Uh, you go to tfconla.com for all the details and, um, to get your tickets and everything. So, uh, that is all we got for me, uh, convention news this week. And that'll do it for this episode of Transmissions Alt Mode. Uh, we, as always, we end the show by thanking our masterpiece Donatrions. So thank you so much to John 4 x Good, Dinobot Maximize, Demon Tech 82, and Curtis Akan. You guys are awesome. Thank you for continuing to support the show at our highest level. That's why we give you a shout out in every episode. Uh, you can also buy some merchandise from our T Public store. That's at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. That also help out the show. Uh, anything you buy from T Public through our link will help us out. Dr. Pants, thanks again for joining us this week. And where can people find everything you do online? Thank you for having me as always. And you can find me and all my Nerdstradamus crew friends uh, at Nerdstradamus.com. You'll find all our links there. But our main outlet is YouTube. You can go to the Nerdstradamus YouTube channel there to find all of our videos. We've been doing full-length video shorts. There's music videos. We do mostly gaming stuff, but we just like to have fun, make people laugh and everything. So... You can check that out, and uh, yeah, we should have videos up soon of our favorite games of 2021, and the games we're most looking forward to of 2022, and if you're listening to this on Friday, join us at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Nurse Your YouTube channel. We stream stuff. Typically, it's games, but we might do other stuff, so come check it out. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. See ya. Later. Thank you for listening to this episode of Transmissions. If you'd like to join the conversation, travel to our Discord channel at transmissionspodcast.com slash Discord. Want some cool transmission swag? Feast your eyes on our transmissions gear at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. If you'd like to support our podcast, go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support or tell your friends about our show. We'll see you next time. Didn't like my intro. <laughs> you didn't write anything. Oh, never mind then. That's still true. He didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> All you wrote was the podcast that loves. That was my intro. <laughs> <laughs> but but don't you guys love? <laughs> you, I guess. It's the theme of 2020. Billy Billy? Billy Billy. Billy Billy. Billy Billy. Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, Billy. Billy, Billy. Billy, Billy. Billy, Billy. 
All and right. there is your outtake for the episode. <laughs> <laughs>